Okay, the chip challenge is the decider of who's cooking tonight because we suck. I got pretty close. I think apart from the people playing in the tournament, I'm the best golfer here. Oh, okay. We're Lloyd and Mandy. Husband and wife who've been traveling the world as digital nomads since 2021. We've been living in Playa del Carmen, Mexico for the past six months, and today we're heading to the opening round of the 2023 Live Golf season and the first ever tournament held here in Mexico. The three day tournament is being held just a short drive from Playa del Carmen at the beachside El Chameleon Golf Course, which is part of the five star Mayacoba Resort here in the Riviera Maya. Not only is this a huge international sporting event for the region, it is somewhat controversial. In case you've never heard of Live Golf, here's a quick rundown. Live Golf is a professional golf tour financed by the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Saudi Arabia. The name Live refers to the Roman numerals of 54. The score if every hole on a par 72 course were birdied and the number of holes to be played at Live events. Journalists and commentators have said the tour is part of efforts by the Saudi monarchy, which has been criticized for its corruption and human rights abuses, to improve its public image through sports. The early framework for a new golf tour to rival the PGA Tour became public in 2019 with the announcement of a league known as the Premier Golf League. The PGA officially responded by implying that golfers who chose to play in a new league would be barred from PGA Tour events. The Premier Golf League held talks with Saudi investors about a financial partnership, but Golf Saudi, a division of the Public Investment Fund, instead funded a new entity in 2020 which made its own plan to establish a global professional league, often referred to as the Super Golf League. This entity formally launched in October 2021 as Live Golf Investments, with former professional golfer and fellow Australian Greg Norman named as CEO. The league has a whopping prize fund of $405 million. One of the most intriguing parts about Live Golf is not only its direct competition with the PGA, but the staggering amounts of money being offered for players to join the new tour. Apparently Dustin Johnson, who was a winner of two major championships and a former world number one, was paid $150 million just to play in the Live series. That does not include prize money. That's just to join the tour. Johnson, who had previously won 24 PGA events and $74 million since 2008, announced his resignation from the PGA Tour on the 7th of June, 2022, saying, I chose what's best for me and my family. And to be completely honest, I don't blame him. But along with the large sums of money comes a lot of controversy. Human rights groups have criticized Live Golf as sports washing, a political strategy by Saudi Arabia to cleanse its repressive global image through sport. Greg Norman has been accused of aiding the repressive Saudi government for his own financial gain. In 2021, Greg Norman denied that he was being used for sports washing and said he works for Live because of his passion for the sport. Live Golf has been described as golf but louder, with live DJs and events attracting a younger, more party-like atmosphere than the traditional PGA. If you're a golf purist, you might not be too happy with what Live Golf is doing to the sport. But today, we're trying to find out if the event lives up to its name and reputation. The anticipation is building. I can hear the music in the distance. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like there's a party going on, so the checking in part was really easy. We heard there was a lot of rules about what you could and couldn't bring. Didn't check anything, so we could have brought whatever we wanted. <laughs> that water is... would have been a good one. <laughs> yeah, they said we had to bring an empty water bottle, but they didn't check it, so. Um, we're just walking through this like long track beside a lake, and I can hear some music going. It sounds like it's gonna be a bit party. of a party atmosphere. <laughs> Pretty keen to get a beer. Me too. The tee off time is, I think, 1.30. It's about 12.30 now. And it's shotgun start, which is different to the PGA, which basically means every player tees off at the same time on a different hole, which is pretty cool. So no matter what hole you're on, um, you'll see somebody teeing off. By the way, never been to a golf, live golf tournament, have you? No, first time. So exciting. First time for everything. Uh, the tickets were reasonably cheap. It was like 600 and something pesos each. Pretty curious to see how expensive food and beer is though. 
generally at these sorts of things it's like really expensive but maybe because we're in Mexico it might be a bit cheaper. We're still walking. <laughs> Where is this joint? <laughs> so this is the Maya Coba golf course, which is apparently like a five-star resort plus golf course. It's meant to be really nice. And this is the first tournament of this season for Live Golf. I think their first season was last year. Uh, but anyway, this is the opening tournament of this season. Pretty full on, there's a lot going on here, but it's about 10 minutes till the shotgun tea time. So we're gonna try and find like any hole, any tea off. Yeah, watch them all tee off. We don't wanna miss it. And then we'll go back and get a beer, I think. <laughs> well, this is a hole here, but... Oh, this is the 18th hole. The tea would be all the way up the other end there. Should we walk up there? Yeah. Yeah, I can so far. It's really cool. There's like, there's a barber shop. You can get your face painted. Um, so many different bars. Uh, I feel like almost it's just like a theme park and the golf really doesn't feel like the main attraction yet. But uh, we'll see what happens once it starts. <laughs> And I thought there was going to be like a firing gun like at the start of a race or something. But we just saw Greg Norman ride past on a beach cruiser. That was pretty cool. The shark. He's looking good. He must be fucking old by now. And speaking of sharks, we want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark provides us with our own VPN while we're on the road. And if you don't know what VPN stands for, it stands for Virtual Private Network. Having a VPN keeps you safe by basically covering up everything you do online kind of like wearing a mask. When your laptop or phone connects to the internet, all of your information is encrypted. So this is really important to us because we are constantly logging onto free Wi-Fi at hotels, airports, and at cafes. So we wanna make sure that all of our information is kept safe. But aside from providing us with extra security on the road, Surfshark also makes it possible for us to access things like Netflix, or Amazon Prime as if we were back in our home country. So basically when you're using Surfshark, you can choose any country server you would like to connect to. And not only that, you can connect an unlimited amount of devices using just one Surfshark account. We've been using Surfshark for over a year now and it has not failed us, so we do really recommend it. So if you sign up today using our code Lloyd and Mandy, you'll receive 83% off plus three months free. VPNs are super important as a traveler, so if you are interested, make sure you hit the link in the description. And they do have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you do change your mind, no worries. All right, now back to the video. The first guy we saw was Sergio Garcia, who is a pretty big name, probably one of the biggest names in the tournament. And he hit the ball, I had no idea where it went. Did you see it? <laughs> no, I didn't see shit. <laughs> That's a wrap. Oh no, one more going apart. Alright, that's one hole done. Man, I can't believe they played 54 holes. So I feel 
and in PGA it's 72. That's so much golf. You could just stay here and watch every golfer come by, which if you're in the, what's that thing called? I don't know, the, the VIP club. The VIP club, that'd be pretty sick. Be so cool. Maybe we can sneak our way in there. That'd be pretty cool, you just see everyone come by and chip and putt. But I think we're gonna have another walk around and see what else is around here. Beers are a bit expensive, about 110 pesos, which is like six bucks US. It's expensive for Mexico. If we're in Australia, it'd be $38 a beer probably. There's definitely not enough shade. Yeah, there's definitely, this whole area here is like a sick place to hang out. There's a big screen showing all the golf, but there's no shade really. We're under like the one umbrella, so I think that's why there's no one here. Right, we're doing a putting challenge. Loser tonight has to cook dinner, yeah? Okay. Hopefully I lose. <laughs> It's hard to get it soft enough, huh? You got it, you got it, yeah. You gotta get like the... Exactly, like a four. You got it, you got it. Ah! It went good! No fear, no fear! Come on, come on. Okay. Try, try again with this one, don't worry. One more. Okay, you got it, you got it, you got it! <laughs> Okay, the chip challenge is the decider of who's cooking tonight because we suck. I got pretty close. I think apart from the people playing in the tournament, I'm the best golfer here. Oh, okay. All right, go. <sighs> oh, that was pretty good. I was just trying to flick it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's see where the ball goes. No idea. That's a shit. It looks like there's random people on the green as well that have just like sunk over the side. That girl does not work here. He yelled out for. I actually saw that one for most of them. <laughs> 
So, honey, where's the beer cart? Is there one? Not looking like it, eh? Surely there's more than one spot you can get beer. I have minor PTSD because the first job I ever got fired from was a beer cart girl at a golf course. <laughs> she lost all the money and the beers, didn't you? Yeah, I got too drunk on the job. Not good. Not great. <laughs> learned, learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah, beer cart would be nice though. And like, my only um, thing I would say so far is like, there's not really many places to sit down or much shade. No. So I guess, you're just supposed to walk around with an umbrella or a hat. Alright, we figured it out, this whole sun and walking around thing. The big stage where they have the big screen and the music and the beers and everything. There's enough shade, everyone's just pulled their bean bags and we pulled some chairs up and I think we're just gonna sit here for the rest of the day. This is like the thoroughfare for all the golfers to walk through when they're finished and they block it off. So you can't get from the toilets to where the bar is and the stage and everything. I've been standing here for like 20 minutes and everyone's just like freaking out trying to get autographs on their titleist hats. They're loving it. Get an autograph, honey. I don't understand autographs. I don't see the purpose of them, but that's just me. <laughs> I didn't know that was still a thing. I bought selfies with the thing. Yeah. All right, that's it. We're headed home. It's about seven o'clock. We thought there was going to be more of like a DJ sort of party happening. It seemed like they were setting up for it, but it never really eventuated, did it? No. There was like a few songs that played, and then as soon as it got dark, everything shut down. So we're heading home early, which is probably best. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't know. Maybe the last day it might be different. Holy shit, there's bats going through here. It still was a lot of fun, though. I'm really happy that we went. Yeah, it was fun. I can't compare it to PGA because I've never been. If you're a golf fan and um, you want to have some fun while you're at the golf, I'd definitely recommend it. Mm -hmm.